Welcome to worship today, this fourth Sunday after Epiphany. We're so glad you were able to join us today. Now, confession and absolution. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have lived in brokenness and despair. We truly are sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now God, who is rich in mercy, loves us and makes us alive in Christ. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit and move you forward in Christ's love and mercy. Amen. Oh, 
feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb was slain, whose blood has freed and united. celebration all of creation sings for joy to the god of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore power and riches wisdom and might all honor and glory to christ forever and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the god of life and love and freedom praise and glory forevermore for god has come to dwell with us to make us people of god to make all things known and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the god of life and love and freedom praise and glory now the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel for this week comes from St. Mark. The first chapter, it picks up right where we left off last week with Jesus uh, calling uh, the first few of the disciples uh, along the seashore of Galilee. And so they go to Capernaum, and that's the first line of this text. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? a new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Grace and peace to you from the triune God who has created us, redeemed us and continues at each and every moment to sustain us in our lives of faith. Amen. My friend Wendy lived two doors down from me and her family went to the Congregational Church. My friend Janet lived in the greenhouse across the street and her family went to the Methodist Church. The neighbors next door to them, the Roars, had seven kids and they lived um, in this three bedroom house and they went to St. Mary's Catholic Church. And my friend Carol, who lived at the other end of the block, her family went to Sacred Heart Catholic Church. And the neighbors to the right of us, they went to a different Methodist church than Janet's family, and the neighbors to the left of us were Presbyterian. We were Lutheran. I sometimes asked why all these people 
went to all these different places, what was the difference? What, what were their churches like? What did they do that was different than what our church did? My parents really never had um, the answers for that. They said that we just believe what we believe and we've always been Lutheran. My mom grew up Lutheran and so we're Lutheran. And so I kind of took that in, even though I had a curiosity to learn more. But I was always in Sunday school. I went to confirmation. We were in worship every weekend, except in the summer when we did some camping. But if we were home, we went to church. And so I thought I had a pretty good understanding of who God was and how God worked. I had grown up believing that, that if I believed in Jesus, if I could believe in Jesus enough, then it would be enough to get me to heaven. And believing in Jesus meant that I was supposed to be a good person. In a lot of ways, it was sort of like being good at Christmas time for different reasons. But so I was trying to be good. I was a good student. I studied hard, I got good grades. I tried to do all the right things. I had a good circle of friends. And yet, 34 years ago, on a cold night in January, everything I believed was turned on its head. On that night, January 30th, 1987, we were at the hospital because I was in labor to give birth to our second child. Emily was born that night prematurely. She was baptized that night in the delivery room. And later that night, just a, just a little while later, she died in our arms and it was devastating. I thought I believed in ways that it wouldn't be my child, that it wouldn't be us, that this happened to other people. I didn't understand it really. I didn't understand how God could work in that way. And that it, it just got worse later that week because on the day of Emily's funeral, as we were trying to grasp what this meant in our own lives and what this meant in um, how we believed God, about God, a friend from high school, her name was Karen as well, she was 26 years old and she died of cancer leaving a three-year-old and a four-month-old on the day of Emily's funeral. And so as I was trying to wrap my head around all that, I could not rectify, I could not reconcile my faith, what I had been taught and what I thought I had learned with the God that really was. Because the God that I had believed in wouldn't allow these tragic things to happen. A God of love doesn't do that. Does a God like that? Well, it kept working on me and I eventually went to seminary to try to figure out who this God was. I really needed to know. My whole life felt like it was founded on this faith practice that was no longer true. And so it needed to either become true, I needed to understand it so that I, I had this faith, or I needed to find a different way forward. I didn't know about grace. Even though the premise of the Lutheran tradition is that we're saved by grace, I didn't ever really understand that. I learned about it at seminary. I studied scripture and I found the triune God to be this incredible God that I had never yet known. And it wasn't that people didn't try to teach me. It's that I think we had privatized faith so much that a lot of people simply don't know who God is because they really don't study scripture. They think it's culturally important to be a member of a church, or at least it was in the days that I was growing up. And you go to worship once a week and you get fed by the, by the sermon and by the communion and by uh, the community, and then you go out and you live your life. And those things really didn't seem to impact one another. So as we're living into the days of the church in these days, and, and the church has become more of a prophetic voice, it's been scary to people. We don't understand why pastors like me talk about faith related to politics or the news or what's going on in the world. And that makes perfect sense because that's not how we grew up. Except our faith is much bigger, much broader than anything that we probably have ever been taught to imagine. And so as we go out into the world, um, we can't imagine how this God is really working. We want a fairy tale God. We want a God where we pray what we want to pray. And then we get the response that we hope to get from a fairy God person. But that's not who our God is. Our God is bigger than that. Our God is better than that. In today's text, we hear this story 
about Jesus. He had just called the disciples, those first four fishermen. He had called them away from their boats and they just went and followed him. And so now they were in Capernaum and he was in the synagogue and he began to teach not only the people in the synagogue, but his disciples. He was teaching them about who God was. And he had this authority, this impressive authority. And he just, he didn't get permission to teach. He just started to teach. And he taught them about his power. And his power could name and tame demons. They had never seen anything like that before. And they were just mesmerized by this authority Jesus had. It struck them as profound that something new was happening. What is this? What is this? They kept asking. We expect that same kind of God, that same kind of Jesus to show up in our world today. We're following. We're people of faith. We're people who believe in Easter resurrection. We believe in these promises and we want to see these miracles in our life today. So if Jesus could name and tame those demons in that day, why can't Jesus name and tame this micro organism living among us, this coronavirus that, that, that's creating even more challenging variations in the world? Why can't Jesus come and get rid of that too? That's a question we could ask. That's an honest question for our faith. But if we look at who God is and this authority that God is teaching the disciples with, God is telling them that here with God, this is what we're able to do. This is the authority that I have. But later on, Jesus gives that authority to the disciples and gives that authority eventually to all of us. And so how is it working? Well, we have scientists and we have doctors and we have researchers. We have intelligent people all over the world who've been working on studying this coronavirus and they've come up with vaccinations. And now as the strain um, mutates, they're coming up with what we need to do in order to meet those requirements too. And so they think there's gonna be a booster and they know how to do that as well. That is that authority unleashed into the world for goodness. But there's other things that we can do and we're called to do right now. We're called to wear masks because we know that protects us. We're called to socially distance because we know that protects us. We know those things to be scientifically true. We have been empowered and the authority has been granted for us to go into the world practicing these things. It's part of our faith. It's part of living faithfully in the world. Sometimes we don't really know how Jesus works because we haven't always been in tune with what the gospel has to tell us. Instead, we allow culture to dictate what Christianity looks like. But that isn't honest. We need to look to scripture. We need to look to scholarly doctrine. We need to understand what this God is at work to do in our world, what this God does for you and for me and for every other human being on the planet. We are precious people and Jesus has come for all of us. Jesus has come to say, I love you. Go out into the world with what you have and make a difference. Make it possible for everybody to have what they need. That is who we're called to be. And it's not private. It's really public. Jesus was doing a public ministry with his disciples. We are called to share our faith in public and profound ways too. And so as we think about our faith, as we think about what it is we believe, how it is we live, may we continue to explore the gospel. Any of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John will tell you over and over again that we are called to love one another as Jesus has loved us. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we are called to love ourselves enough, to like us enough that we can be generous with other people. This authority that Jesus has is a profound authority, a gift from God, and we've been given it too. Thanks be to God. Amen.
the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, I give in here a taste of the kingdom. Together join the greatest and the least, we all are one at wisdom's holy feast. Wisdom calls throughout the city, knows our hunger and in pity, gives a loving invitation to the banquet of salvation. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the kingdom. Together join the greatest and the least. We all are one at wisdom's holy Simple ones whose hearts are yearning Come and gain from wisdom's learning Bread and wine she is preparing Know her loving in the sharing We eat the bread of teaching Drink wine of wisdom Our Together join the greatest and the least. We all are one at wisdom's holy feast. Enter with delight in singing, for her richness now is bringing us this joyous celebration. Eat and drink in jubilation. We eat the bread of teaching, drink wine of wisdom, are given here a taste of the kingdom. Together join the greatest and the least, we all are one at wisdom's holy feast. We continue our worship with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, the prayers of the people. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Let's take just a brief moment of silence. For all God's work and creation, plants, animals, water, and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For government and leaders, cities and nations, rescue professionals and legal attorneys, elected officials and grassroots organizers, for all responsible for the well-being of civil society, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV or AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need for caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have lost loved ones yesterday or years ago, grant each of them healing and peace in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the concerns of each of us, for those who are not be here to hear the wor or words, those celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, for the people of God in this place and for other needs in our community, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the covenant God made with us in the waters of baptism and thanksgiving for the baptized who have died in the Lord, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now please join me in praying the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hey, Pastor Doug, hey, it what? looks like you're ready to go outside. What are you up to? I am. I've got my gloves on, my hat on, because I've got something to show you. We well, are caring for creation today, and we're doing that by trimming some trees. And so I wanted to show you how that's happening. It's oh, cool. Should we go out? Yeah, let's go look. They are climbing up. trees, Tree. and they're going to trim some trees up there. They've climbed up on ropes. Now digging for his stuff. Oh, wow, he's got all his tools up there, too. Yeah. And he's got a saw. Oh, cool. Do you think he's going to use the saw? I hope so. I hope so. We want to show that off. Yeah. And there's another one climbing. Oh, wow, look at this. Yeah, He's going to trim some trees. Whoa, is he a good climber? He's a very good climber. It looks kind of exciting. It is exciting. And a little dangerous. Yeah, whoa. Oh, and now there's a saw. Look at the saw coming down. Whoa. Whoa, I don't even know if I can get, there it is. He got it. Okay, so there's people on the ground. Yep. And there's people way up high in the tree. Yep. And they've way up off high. a little bit already. Okay, and there's this guy over here. And he's trimming some too. That is so cool. Should we see if they take something down? I think we should see if they take something down. Okay. and break it off. He just broke that off. That was dead. So they're fixing parts of the tree that are needing to be trimmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that are broken. Mike, I'll need a block oh. and a chainsaw. Okay.
Go some branches. Have to be careful. Yeah. Now they're gonna bring a saw up. We'll watch that come up. Where's that at? Okay. Oh, that is so cool. That is cool. What's this, sir? How many people are ice fishing today? Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't notice them. Hey, thanks, guys, for trimming our tree. What'd you say? Thank you for trimming our tree. Yeah, thanks for hiring us. You're welcome. Okay, this is the continuation. We came inside quick, but we want to close in prayer. So let's pray. Hello, God. Hello, God. Thank you. Thank you. For trees. For trees. And people that climb trees. And people that climb trees. And people that would trim the trees. And people that trim the trees. Keep them safe. Keep them safe. Help them do their jobs. Help them do their jobs. So that the trees. So that the trees. Will live long and healthy lives. Will live long and healthy lives. As you would want us to do. As you would want us to help that happen. Yes, for sure. And all God's people say. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. you